And the fact that I could have been sharing my book reads with y'all because I read like a person with mental illness. <laughs> search fam Sharday here welcome or welcome back to the channel if you're new here my name is Sharday and I'm out here curating and co-creating a cool ass life sometimes that includes books <laughs> and it's fall like look I have on my t-rex sweater because it's cold on the outside so we're gonna talk about books that are on my tbr for the fall now I have always the best intentions to read the books I got at home do I do that? No, <laughs> but I have started to try to keep track of them. I have like a sort of incentive system for myself now. And so if you all watched my video about my August wrap up, um, what I did was I started putting my books, the physical books in my windowsill, like a trophy. And I just would watch as I read more books. So this has been getting me to read my physical books that I, that I have at home because I love reading physical books. I really do. But that Kindle girl, she got me in a chokehold. <laughs> so I have books here that are cozy. Some of them are creepy because it's the fall. Fall is one of my favorite seasons. And I just want to sh share with you some of the things that I'm looking for, hopefully to getting through over the next quarter. We'll see how it goes. Let's not hold me to it because it might not go well. Um, so what I'll start with is uh, a couple of audiobooks that I am going to be reading because I've been reading audiobooks while I've been out there getting my run on. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to read The God and the Gimme Ho, uh, which if I'm saying that incorrectly, I am so sorry, but it is a Korean fiction novel and it is supposed to be kind of like a K-drama and fantasy and it's about um you know Korean low folk folklore and so I'm really excited to read that because one of my things this year was I wanted to read more widely like more uh different cultural um books and I have been doing really well so far and I'm I've been really pleased with sort of the worlds that are opening up to me via books because I'm reading about other cultures so I am going to be doing that one as an audiobook um I also will probably continue the Kingman series it's a romance um it's a romance series that is very fluffy all in all of the female characters are plus size. It's a family of, you know, famous football players and the women that they fall for. It's super cute. It's very pleasant to be reading while I'm out here getting my workouts in. So those are two things that are probably going to be on my reading list for audiobooks. As far as digital books, I because I do have a, a KU subscription and I'm preparing for next year's book camp, I'm probably going to start the Sinful series by Asia Simone. I think that's the name of um, the author. And I'll put it in the downstairs um, to make sure I get it right. This series was picked by my best friend Key for our book list for book camp. So I'm going to get started because I think there's six books in the series. So I'm going to get started with the first book um, and see how it goes, whether I get more than that done over the next three months. But I'll at least start the first one. Now, for my physical books, these are all books that I have, I think most of them I've gotten this year. And um, so I'm excited about diving into these. And sometimes I have to take breaks because I am very much a, a mood reader. So especially when it comes to like um, dark books and I found with the sci-fi and fantasy books, like I'll go on a stretch where I read a lot of them at one time and then I'll get burned out and I have to switch genres or switch tropes or something because I want to read it, which is what happened to me over the summer. So I'm excited to start with... Um, Certain Dark Things by Sylvia Morena Garcia. And this is, it's vampires. Um, the genre is a noir. Um, so it is dark, um, 
think very like dark mystery kind of situation but she calls it a neon noir which I, you kind of get the sense of that because of the cover and so it's also set in Mexico City um I'm going to put the links for all this so you can read the uh the descriptions in detail if you find it interesting I just want to sort of give you my take on it but y'all know I don't try to keep you here too long um so I'm excited about diving into this one certain dark things has been on my my to read list for two years and so I finally picked up a physical copy so that I can read it um I'm going to continue reading uh the library of the dead and this one I started when I was uh in Brazil and I'm I'm like I'd say a third of the way done with it and it's it's a good book um I just you know mood reading so I kind of ended up putting it down, picking up some other things. But this book is about, a, it's set in Edinburgh in Scotland. And it's about a, a young um, lady. I think she's Jamaican Scottish and she can speak to ghosts. So what happens is, you know, one of the ghosts gets attached to her and, and is t suggesting that someone is out here killing kids in her city. And so now she didn't, she's gotten all, you know, invested. She's got, she's trying to figure out who killing the kids. And she's like, I don't know, 16, 17 years old herself. So she's not very, she's a young person. Um, and so far as that, I love um, the main character. Her name is uh, Ropa, I think, um, if I remember correctly. And I just love her because she is irreverent and she is, she's just trying to survive out here. So I can really appreciate that. So like I said, I have, I enjoyed it when I started reading it and then I just, you know, put it down, but it's cold outside. It's almost spooky season. So it's time. Let me pick this back up. It's very dark academia vibes. It's the first book of the series. So yes, it's, it's well written. So I can already tell y'all I'm enjoying it. I just got to finish it. Um, now this book, I, one thing about me, I love Eartha Kitt. She is one of my women icons, right? So she has actually written, um, maybe three or four, um, memoirs over her, her life. And so I found a copy of Confessions of a Sex Kitten and I bought it. Um, it's a, this is an ex library copy. So I am excited about reading this memoir and she's got a whole chapter on James Dean. It's going to be tea. So I'm super excited about this. Um, I purchased this book, um, kind of sight unseen, right? Like I saw it on TikTok and the author was talking about her book and how she was trying to get it off, um, you know, off the ground and things like that. And then it got picked up to be published and she's brand new author and I was super excited for her and um so it's a it's a dark academia book written by a black woman um I will at least say person of the diaspora because I do not know oh she's Ethiopian okay so she's Ethiopian um and she lives in Australia so I got immortal the Immortal Dark. And I am so excited because I ended up getting one of the special edition copies. Um, and it says no soul can enter without invitation. And I, you had me at Dark Academia written by a person of the diaspora, like I was in. And so um, I am excited. I don't totally remember what the premise of the book is. I don't care. I'm going to read it. <laughs> so there's that. Um, also this one, uh, for those of you all don't, who don't know, I also, I write myself. So when this book came out or, and people were starting to talk about it, I was so excited because we had not seen, you know, that many magical school books that were about, you know, black college age people. Right. And so th the fact that there have been more black magical school related books has made me so happy. So I'm super excited. This is like HBCU Hogwarts, supposedly, and this is Blood at the Root. And so I'm super excited. My friends and I are reading this together. I am doubly excited because it brings in Hoodoo and Conjure, and that's just my jam 
as a scholar of religion, black scholar of religion. So um, I also got a special edition copy of this one with the sprayed edges get into her. So I am going to be reading this in September because I feel like September back to school. Perfect time. Perfect time for magical school books and probably perfect time for dark academia. Get into it. While we're on the dark academia train, I feel like this is most of the books in terms of what I'm going to be reading, uh, what I'm planning to read this season. Um, I got The House of Marion, and I bought this some time ago um, as research for a, a book idea that I was tinkering around with. And so I, you know, I started, like I read the first couple of pages and I wasn't ready for it, right? And so... I put it down, but now it's time to bring it back. This one is, you know, dark academia, it's debutante, it's intrigue, it's, you know, outcast who doesn't want to be there, but she's got to inf infiltrate high society. Can't wait. I'm I'm hoping that this will be like an exciting read for me. So I'm, I'm very excited to, to get into this at some point. Now, the next book is from one of my automatic purchase authors and that's peach jelly clark i love peach jelly clark's novellas they are just so smart so well written i still have to read the novel master of gin um but again you know you guys i got to be in the mood for some things guys um and i can't help that but his new book is called the dead cat um assassin i think dead cat tail assassins and i immediately bought it i ain't even had to know what it was about I say give it to me because I've read Ring Shout and I've read The Black God's Drums and they both were just so good. Like I'm probably going to end up teaching both of them in one of my courses at some point. Now, this one is about um, an assassin who um, gets uh, who has to, to finish a job and get sort of resurrected or like reanimated to do it. So this has got, you know, some magic. It's got some some violence in it. I, and I love, I just, like I said, this was an immediate purchase for me. So I'm very excited about, um, getting into this one. This one might actually be, I might get into this one this week. Now I've been waiting for this book for years, like a lot of people. If you have been into the, you know, the children of blood and bone series, the kids were waiting, we were waiting. And when the book finally dropped, I got excited, but then I was like, oh, I got to prepare myself because the way that the second book, Children of Venge Vengeance and Virtue ended, I'm glad I had a few years <laughs> so, so that I could sit with it. But also I was pissed because I was like, now what happens? So you already know, we are going to finish um, the Legacy of Orisha series and I can't wait. I just... Mm. It just this is, has been such a good series. I own all three books in hardcover. And, you know, I feel like Tomi Adeyemi would be another one that's always an immediate purchase. Um, now, this is another book that I started and put down, not because it's not good, like it's so well written, but it is very, it's dystopian, very close, like the, the future that it depicts, not too far off. So it's like, it's one of those things you gotta, be, you got to be ready for it. And that is The Blueprint. I've heard such good things about this. And it's about, um, you know, women who end up being becoming like, I guess, sold or chose, chosen as wives for upper um, echelon people in the society. And like this one, she's she's questioning, but also she's questioning alongside reading the letters of um, one of her ancestors, I think it was like her great, great grandmother or something and her experience trying to be a runaway. So, um, I've had an arc of this, like it's published now, but I got this as an arc, um, from my local bookstore. So I started it and enjoyed it. I, I just thought it was so, so well written and engaging, but it is one of those books that I'm reading a little bit more slowly. So I will be picking this back up because I desperately want to finish it. Now, the next one is going into the cozy fantasy realm, and we love a cozy fantasy around here. I love a low stakes, 
you know, just curl up with it. I love it also when it's not too long because I, I love finishing things. And that's Lore of the Wilds. And of course, you know, I was supporting Black authors, Black, you know, producers of books and things like that. I did get a fancy copy. There's a, I have, I have a thing. You know, I'm trying to buy less books, but that just means I'm buying fancy books now. <laughs> so um, Lore of the Wilds is about um, Lore, who ends up convincing a fey prince that she, you know, has the ability, like has powers to do this thing that, that he want, he needs done. And so she ends up caught between him and, you know, another uh, mythical creature. Uh, and they're in this like weird tense love triangle situation and Laura is figuring out what actually the price of the power she wants is through going on this like adventure with these two these two male folks and so um it's not that long um and I'm you know I'm looking forward to getting back into it I feel like I started this one as well but I don't even have to tell y'all at this point. Y'all know how it goes. Yeah, I did start this. So I'll probably re restart it and, and finish it this time. Um, when I went to Blurred Fest in May, I met a writer. Her name is Shy August, and she wrote a Shifter series. Um, and so I got the first book of the Shifter series. So it is Black Shifters, and we love to see it. And so I am going to read um, the first book, which is about a shifter named Ansel. He's He wants to get married, but also he doesn't want to feel the pressure of, you know, producing heirs, for more shifters and things like that. And he finds um, Imani. And Imani's not going, but Ansel's like, girl, you'd want for me. And so we're going to see what happens with them and whether they get together, get it together. So I'm excited to, to dive into that one. Um, this one has also been on my TBR for a long time. And I had a digital copy. I just never read it. And then I was gifted a physical copy of um, David Mogo, God Hunter. And this is a Nigerian fantasy fiction. It invokes like uh, Nigerian gods and like lore and things like that. And so um, David Mogo is a demigod and a god hunter. So this is the story of like how he is on a mission to capture two of the most powerful gods in his city. So yeah, this, this should be lit. Um, and then last, but probably not the only thing that will end up on my list is a book that I purchased. Um, I purchased it around my birthday. Um, and I read, um, Amanda Weaver's work before she wrote the house of transcendence, um, which I loved. It was just such a good book. Um, and so she dropped a new book that is a Dante's Inferno retelling also like a thruple, I think, um, and sapphic. So we'll be reading, nobody's going to, uh, no one's going to take her soul away. And so that's that. I, I love a good retelling. And so I'm excited. And I, now I'm kind of glad that I didn't read it when I first got it in the mail because now I can read it during fall and that's going to be a whole moment. So yeah, that's a, that's over 10 books. <laughs> We're going to see how this goes. Cause you know, I'd be reading for vibes when it comes to things that are not on like not for, for work. So as always friends, um, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend about the channel. Also, tell me downstairs what you're going to be reading for the fall. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.